Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Concerned parents have contacted Huggies claiming they found glass shards in their baby wipes. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. In a now viral video, a mother opens a new package of Huggies wipes and shows what could appear to be shimmering shards in the wipes. Other angry parents took to social media as well, posting their own videos, photos and stories of alleged glass tainted wipes. But other parents are very skeptical that the substance is glass and they say they're going to continue using the brand. Huggies posted a response on its Facebook page saying, we take any concerns about our products very seriously and we are working directly with this parent to learn more about what happened and how we can help. We have Huggies full response online and contact information if you have additional questions. Just head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. And tonight at 10 o'clock, we look at the far reaching negative effect a simple online video can have on a big brand. Folks in Red Lake Falls, Minnesota, are now turning some national negative publicity into tourism gold. As we told you earlier this week, the Washington Post ranked Red Lake County as the worst in America. As Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, folks there are turning the tables on that negative publicity with Minnesota Nice. The Washington Post ranked Red Lake County as the worst in the nation based on scenery and climate. Jason Brumwell of Voyager's View Campground and Tubing says he just smiled when he heard about the article. He says his own opinion of this being a beautiful place is constantly reinforced by many of the 20,000 people who pass through here every summer. As, as somebody who gets to hear how beautiful this, this place is every single day from people all over the world, all over the U.S., you know, it, it didn't bother me. It's, it's somebody sitting in an office in Washington, D.C. who's never seen this place. I think it's wonderful. I think it gave us uh, thousands of dollars of publicity that we never had before and put us on the map. Uh, I remember one guy telling us one time that we're the best kept secret in northwestern Minnesota. Yeah. Now we're no longer the best kept secret, so. <laughs> <laughs> it all started folks here thinking, why not even get more free publicity and invite the author of that article, Christopher Ingram, for a visit. You're running around in there, flat plains everywhere. And then you come to Red Lake Falls and all of a sudden you're in the valley and, and just the rolling hills and it's, it's absolutely beautiful here. Nobody around here disputes that. And guess what? Today, Washington Post reporter Christopher Ingram said yes to Brumwell's invitation to visit. He's scheduled to spend a couple of days here looking around this area with its biggest promoter, Jason Brumwell. But it's kind of neat to have, have people from all those different countries come here and, and just tell us how beautiful the place was. Uh, from Red Lake Falls, Minnesota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. We'll have this story when the Washington Post reporter visits Red Lake Falls next week. If you'd like to see the Washington Post article, we have it online. Go to valleynewslive.com, click on this story. Well, we saw it once with the Canadian wildfires, and we're now we're seeing it again with the wildfires burning out in western U.S. Today, it's a little bit hazy out there in the valley as smoke from the fires comes our way. And Valley News Live has interactive radar on the website to check this out. It allows you to track the fires. Let's head over to meteorologist Hutch Johnson for a first look at our forecast and a sneak peek at some severe storms we're eyeing on the weekend. Hutch? That is correct, Stephanie. As we head into the evening, our Friday night looks very quiet. Temperatures very warm in the central western Dakotas this evening. We're going to stay dry, but the real threat is that risk for severe weather as we go into the day on Saturday. It looks like afternoon storms will develop. Visible satellite doesn't show anything developing yet. Things really get cooking tomorrow afternoon. The main threat from tomorrow afternoon's storms will be the large hail and damaging straight line winds. We could see isolated tornadoes as well. We'll have hour by hour details on that, so just be prepared. And again, that interactive radar could come in handy today, tracking fires, tomorrow, yes. tracking thunderstorms. Got a little bit of everything. Indeed. All right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. A Minnesota Wild assistant coach was arrested and charged today with two counts of second degree DWI. The second charge includes aggravated factors because he was twice the legal limit with his 12 year old son in the vehicle. 43 year old Daryl Sidor was on his way back to his son's hockey game when they got lost. Another driver saw him swerving and called police to report it. When authorities arrived, they noticed Sider's vehicle was weaving in between lanes before he turned into a church parking lot to make a U-turn. 
His 12-year-old son was sitting in the front seat trying to navigate his side arc to the hockey game. Well, it's Friday. Time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Joshua Fearing is wanted for probation violation on possession of drug paraphernalia. Call law enforcement if you have any information on Fearing. The launch of a new website where families can honor loved ones they've lost started today. It's called the Motor Vehicle Crash Memorial Site. The page is a place for families of crash victims in North Dakota and the roads there to create a memorial in honor of their loved ones, but also to send a message and create public awareness on traffic safety. The launch of the web page is in conjunction with the annual Labor Day Impaired Driving Crackdown, Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over, which started today and lasts until September 7th. Two more people are applying to be Fargo's police chief, bringing the total to 22. Applications will be accepted until midnight tonight. Two Fargo police administrators are among them, the latest, Lieutenant Joel Vettel. Interim Chief Dave Todd also applied. They are the only two from the Fargo department so far seeking the post. Mayor Tim Mahoney says he'd like to have the job filled by late September, early October. The chief's position opened up after Keith Turnus resigned in November. Too much lint in a clothes dryer is being blamed for a Grand Forks house fire. Crews responded to 1017 Cherry Street at 7 last night. A dryer on the main floor had caught on fire. The main floor along with the basement got heavy smoke and fire damage. The family was able to get out safely and they're now being housed by the Red Cross. With many kids heading back to the books, the start of the school year and this is also the sports season. And it's right around the corner. As with the start of any sports season, issues of safety come to the forefront. Our Washington correspondent, Kelly Meyer, followed up with one U.S. senator who's been pushing for legislation that would keep your son and daughter safer on the field. It's estimated that over 100,000 students playing high school sports suffer concussions every year. Many go unreported. Illinois Senator Dick Durbin is working to bring that number down using a little inspiration from an old hobby. As an old football player himself, Illinois Senator Dick Durbin knows how important it is to stay safe in the game. Err on the side of safety, err on the side of caution. That's why he's continuing to push for legislation called the Protecting Student Athletes from Concussions Act. Durbin says the act would strengthen K-12 schools' procedures for preventing, detecting, and treating student athletes who suffer concussions while competing. I visited a high school in Chicago not long ago and met with the football team and it was a great day. And it wasn't more than two weeks later that there was a serious injury of one of those same players in a, just a routine high school football game, and the poor young man went into a coma. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates nearly 3.8 million incidences of sport-related concussions occur every year. Durbin's legislation includes a policy that would require students who are suspected of having a concussion to stay out of the game. The bill would also force schools to notify a student's parents of an injury and obtain a written release from a health care professional before the student can return to play. Durbin says the point is to mandate a national, when in doubt, sit it out policy. Make sure they're safe another day for another game. Senator Durbin tried to get this legislation in the recently passed education bill. It didn't make it in, but he was able to make sure that the bill addresses student athletic safety. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. Well, all states would have five years from the bill's enactment to issue guidance to schools about concussion plans. A state that fails to do so is going to forfeit 5% of its federal formula funding the first year, another 5% the second. Well, the clock is ticking for artists hoping to enter in the city of Fargo's flag design contest. There are just two days left to submit your design. Residents can submit a flag or vote on their favorite. Voting goes until September 23rd. The flags that get the most votes will be part and presented to the Art Partnership Committee, then go to the Fargo City Commission. Just a reminder, if the Fargo City Commission does not approve the flag, it may not be adopted. The contest is free, and so far 70 flags have been submitted. To create or vote on a flag, head to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Well, you see them on the streets, probably eat at a few of them. It's a food truck festival. It's all happening today and tomorrow at the North Dakota Horse Park. Now, more than a dozen vendors are going to be open till 11 tonight and again tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Trucks from Bemidji, Minnesota to Ashley, North Dakota are going to be serving their food to win the Best of the Fest trophy. Here today. I just thought it'd be fun to come outside and enjoy the weather and uh, get some uh, like fair food or vendor food. It's really good. 
It looks good. During the Festival, a flea market will also be open with vendors selling their crafts.